KSP2 in its current state ranges from bad to entirely unplayable, but you're on this video, so you know that already. You likely already have your own experience with this game, either because you played it and refunded, watched someone else play and decided to wait for now, or like me, you bought it and you're now sucking down enough copium that you're also convinced that Star Citizen might be finished soon too. I've heard all the complaints. Hell, I've sought out user reviews to get a pulse of what people are most frustrated with. From what I've seen, the list goes like this in order from most important to least. Bugs, performance, design, and missing features. So, what the hell happened? What are the biggest shortcomings currently, and will the team be able to continue development to create a great game from this blundered start, or is KSP as an IP in serious trouble? If you're enjoying the video, hit like and subscribe to join the channel. Before we can solve the big questions here, we need to go over the main culprits on the list of failures on launch. Performance. This was a major concern for me as I saw gameplay footage again and again seeming to have very low frame rates. I figured if the developer of the game could only show the game with 20 FPS, what the hell was my 1080 graphics card from 2016 going to be able to do? Then of course, recently, just before the game was about to drop on Steam, we saw the dreaded system requirements and many of us made videos, myself included, lamenting that as well. So, how bad is it? Well, it's bad, but maybe not as bad as you think. Let me explain. I get 80 FPS in the VAB, 20 FPS on the launch pad, and about 40 FPS in space. Once I land on another celestial body, it goes back down to 20 FPS. If KSP was a competitive first-person shooter, this would be unacceptable. But as you may know, it's not a first-person shooter, and because it's not, frames really become more about whether or not it's displaying the graphics smoothly and in a way that it's not jarring to the eye and annoying to watch. And for the most part, for me, it's not. The frame rate isn't jumping up and down, it's just staying steady, which helps a lot, to be honest. Other than on landings and on the pad, it doesn't feel that bad, and for me, it's 100% playable. But then, I took my headphones off and realized that my PC wasn't gasping for air, as if it wasn't even that hot. Sure enough, a quick trip to the task manager showed the GPU was not even running at full capacity. This makes me very hopeful that the game is simply not optimized and it's not even using our hardware fully. It's promising that optimization is very possible and likely will improve performance drastically. But will this happen tomorrow? No. But in time, I believe it will be better. Onto the bugs, of which there are many. Perhaps you saw Beardy Penguin's early access review where he straight up couldn't play the game. Essentially what happened was a bit of UI for a tooltip got stuck on his screen, a big white arrow. This arrow of doom was so persistent that it followed him to the main menu of the game. After closing the whole game and trying to reopen it to fix it, KSP2 just errored out. After trying to verify game files, reinstalling, he just couldn't play. Nothing that bad has happened to me, luckily, but I know a lot of people who are getting fully game-breaking bugs. For me, the biggest issues here have been the dreaded tooltip arrow getting stuck on my screen. Actually, my first mission, I had a big video window trying to explain something that got stuck on the screen as well. Not the best first-time user experience. Perhaps for the time being, it might be best to give us an option to just turn these tooltips off entirely. I haven't found an option for that myself in the menu or in the learning facility, so... <sighs> Anyways. Other bugs include, but are not limited to, decoupler is not working when staged with an engine, can't create maneuver nodes when paused, game paused or resumed spam messages filling up the screen, can't switch between vessels, screen spinning wildly in map view, time warp displaying wrong numbers, orbital lines disappearing, a clamshell fairing fucking blowing up my fucking ship in space above the fucking mun. <clears throat> Bugs will of course be fixed, but what about full-on design mistakes? Here's my favorite one. Imagine, if you will, you build a ship. You launch it and you lovingly put it into space on an encounter with your favorite little blue moon Minmus. Of course, you click over to target Minmus. Maybe you click focus as well and go have a look on the map screen. Well, it's time to go back and focus on our own ship, right? Right click on the ship and there's two options that come up. One is focus, the other is destroy. Oh, that seems odd. Well, at least they would definitely add a dialogue for that, like, are you sure you want to blow up your ship? No, f you, your ship's gone because you click fast like a fucking dummy. Just be smarter next time and maybe you won't destroy your ship in orbit. Seriously, this is such a quick fix, I'd assume, just adding an are you sure box. 
or removing this option from crewed vessels and having it in the parts manager instead. Lastly, the missing features. This is fine, honestly. They needed the game out for reasons which are more about business than anything else. There is no way the devs wanted to release the game in this state. I have seen the lead dev Nate Simpson say that they are actually playing multiplayer behind closed doors already. Also, the data miners have already done their thing and they've said they've found all sorts of other parts of the game in there already, even things for interstellar travel and base building, they're already being worked on. These things will come in time, and the game will hopefully be better for it when the host of bugs that I'm sure these things will bring are also sorted. But hold on, is there anything else we can glean from what the data miners found? They found the game was being worked on with all feature complete sections simultaneously. Those extra sections had to be removed and hidden for this public version to work. Meaning, there are added layers of complexity being loaded and hidden from us. Perhaps a big reason why the bugs in performance are so apparent for what seems like a simple game. This last minute switch to putting something out must have been super difficult and has created a huge misconception in the minds of many. The statement goes something like this, quote, KSP devs have had three years to work on this and this is all we got? The answer is no. You and I are not seeing a ton of the work that's been done over that three years. Along with the usual excuses of COVID splitting the team up physically and the messy dissolution of the original developer Star Theory games, a ton of what's been worked on is currently hidden, but does exist. I know it sounds a bit like, guys, I promise there actually is some gold in my pile of garbage if we just get some more shovels and I'll show it to you. But maybe it really is that way. But I did start this video explaining that I'm on some amount of copium, right? Is the game doomed? Will they be able to continue to work on it? My first concern is, of course, if they botch this release enough to the point that it's not bought and that what is bought gets mass refunded, would the publisher pull the plug on the entire project to cut their losses? I believe that seeing as the last game was a cult classic that pulled in a lot of revenue over its life in the way of continued sales and eventual DLCs, the IP has a lot of legs and the publisher knows that. If they have been demoed these promising features behind closed doors, they will continue to allow the team to fix the game. I worry about the sort of pressure the devs must be under with now such a loud voice online of disdain coming from many fans. I really hope that the negativity doesn't hurt them but instead fuels them to push forward and make the game they know we want. Right now their Twitter has been silent since launch day on the 24th. And that's good. It's exactly what the devs at Hello Games did when No Man's Sky had a troubling launch. They put their nose to the grindstone and went absolutely nuts creating improvement after improvement until the game was done. Then they just kept going, until now, when their game is not only feature complete, but over delivers again and again with gameplay no one could have dreamed of when it was launched. What KSP2 needs right now is for Intercept Games to take a page from that playbook right now and get to work. I can't wait to see what they come up with.